Hi, I'm Susan and welcome to my channel. Today I want to show you how to make these beautiful crowns. You'll be amazed how simple they are to make and how beautiful they can decorate for a party, your dining room table, or any place. So let's get started. Now I'm starting off with a cereal box. You can use a cracker box, any kind of box you have. And I'm just going to cut off this end flaps here just to make it easier. And I'm just going to open up the box. Now, I don't really want to measure everything out individually because I'm too lazy. I'm just going to take a ruler and I'm just going to use the width of my ruler. So if you want to measure it out, this is about an inch and a quarter wide. But I just find it easier to just use the width of the ruler because it only has to be whatever width you want. I'm going to make a smaller crown this time because I filmed this before making a full head size crown and it kept going out of the camera because it was too big and I don't have a large enough tripod set up that will fit on my table. So it's the same process making it large or small. It's just that I prefer you have a better quality video. So I'm just making strips all along and I'm just marking this. Now my ruler is not as long as these strips are. Now if you have a shorter box it worked just as well for me. So don't feel like you have to have a longer box. This is just what I have in my stash. Now this part where the box has a crease in it, I'm just going to ignore that part. So I'll only get one piece out of this middle part here. And that's okay. I just don't want the crease in the middle. I'm sure it would probably work fine. I don't want to find out if it doesn't work after I've got my crown assembled. Now that I have my cardboard all marked out, I'm just going to cut these strips individually. And you can just watch TV or something while you do it. This is kind of boring, but it's the hardest part of the whole thing. I'll cut all these strips and be right back. I have all my pieces cut and I just cut the box up. So if I have too many, I can just reinforce it. And I'm doing this smaller to fit a statue that I have, or sometimes I like to make tablescapes and use this type of a decoration on a tablescape. So I'm just going to take two pieces and put them together with a piece of masking tape. This is some two inch masking tape or an inch and a half. And I'm just using whatever I have. It's no big deal. So whatever kind you have, you have a skinny one, fat one, it doesn't matter. Just bond them together. And I think I need at least four of them to go around this. So I'm just going to connect four because I want this to be stronger. This cardboard is super thin and super flimsy. And so we're going to have to build it up anyway. And the easiest way to do that is just by using it several times over. I'm just adhering these pieces together. And you can make this 10 long if you want. It doesn't matter. It's just how sturdy you want the crown. And this is literally recycled garbage. So it's not like this is precious stuff to use too much of. Turn it into a crown size and then I can measure it and then I'll be able to tape this all together once I get it measured out. So this is the diameter. Now if you want this to be on your head you'll want a few more for stability and you can always keep adding to it. I find once you get a basic size just adding to it is easier than to try to coil up a super huge piece. Now I have the size that would fit my statue so I've got another piece of tape but when you have it together you're going to have to put little notches in your tape if you have a wider tape like this so that it doesn't bunch up when you pull it around. This way I'm pulling down those little tabs and I'm not getting a big bunch. Now I'm just going to take my tape and start to tape it all together. I like to make this one solid piece so that it gets more stability. And I don't know if I will be adding more pieces to this. It really depends on the thickness. And you'll feel it. You, I won't have to tell you, oh, well, you need three or four or five or six thicknesses. You'll feel how st stable it is. If it's real wobbly, keep adding cardboard. I want to make sure I don't have any gaps in here as I attach the cardboard around in a ring. So I'm just making sure it's pulled nice and tight. And then I can tighten this down around that. I'll just keep adding tape and where I have these little hooks in it where you know it's attached and it keeps bending that will stiffen up from adding this all together. I basically add about four or five inches in and then tape it and then add another piece of tape. So 
so that I can hold it tight. It's all about making this into a nice solid ring. Because this is going to hold all of the weight of the top piece. You want to make sure this is nice and sturdy. And as I get into this last piece, I've got three loops around. I think I'm going, to, I need to have six pieces for my crown. So I have six pieces here. So this is all my excess. So that makes me feel like since I've got so much excess, I should make this at least one or two more thicknesses. So I'm just going to add that right on there. And don't forget to cut the tabs in, otherwise this will leave a lot of bulk in your crown part. And that's nice and thick. And you can see if it's got a lot of bounce to it or whether it, you can, should stiffen it up a little bit more. I'm feeling one more would just make this perfect. So I'm just going to continue adding one more strip. And when I come back, you'll see that it's really got a nice circle to it. It's nice and sturdy. I've made a few of these now and when I didn't thicken this up, I didn't get a nice round shape to it. So it it's fine if I'm using it on a tablescape or something, but I've done so much work on top of it that I wish I had reinforced it more. So that's my advice to you of not to be cheap like I was with the cardboard. So I'll add one more piece so I can really feel that it's thick. My first one I only did, I think, twice around and after I started getting the weight on it, I saw it distorting. So it came out okay, like you wouldn't be able to tell, but I can. There, now I've got a much sturdier and it's not bending like my other one was. So that was four pieces of cardboard, which I would definitely recommend over the two that I did in my first one. Now what I'm going to do is just take some tape and I'm just going to cover this whole piece with tape. If you're wondering why would I waste my time doing that, Every bit that I put on this will stiffen it up a little bit more. Now here's a previous one that I've made. You've already seen it or you'll see it at the end when it's all finished. But I made a couple mistakes on this and that's why I want to show you. Here I only used two layers of cardboard and you can see how it's distorted. It's not perfectly round. Now is it something that would make me trash this? No, it'll probably be fine using it as a tablescape or on a statue or something. But I just want to show you my mistakes so that you don't have to go through this pain. Now to create these little facets that go up the top, I used a single layer of cardboard. And that was a real mistake. I should have used double that up, maybe even tripled it. When I made the larger one, I had to reinforce it a lot with a lot of tissue paper and paper inside so that I could strengthen it because the single layer of cardboard is just too weak. So we're not going to make that mistake again. I don't have cardboard that's as long as these, and I really don't need them as long as these, but I want to show you this anyway. So I've joined these two shorter pieces together. Now when I join them together to make a longer piece, don't put the joints top on top of each other because now you've got two weak spots, one on top of the other. Stagger them. So I'll put one down here and one, if I pull this down, down here. So now when I attach these two together, they don't have the joints meeting, they'll be much stronger. Now, I don't need them all this long, but if you do need, if you're doing a larger full size one, you will need them longer. And then what I would do is cut off this one end if you needed a longer piece. And now you have your joint over here. So all the joints are reinforced on the other side. So when I attach it here, so if you were doing a full size crown where you need this longer, now you have a reinforced piece. And if you're doing a really oversized crown, I would use three. But for a smaller crown or a normal size head, two should probably do this just fine. So I'm going to attach all of these together and make them into double thickness pieces. So now I have my circle reinforced and my little pieces reinforced. You'll need six of these pieces. It doesn't matter the width of them, it's just your personal preference. I did them the same as my ruler as the crown base just because it was easy. Now I'm just going to take a marker, pen, anything, and I'm going to put an X inside of my little circle there. And directly opposite of that, I'm going to put another X. 
Now, if this isn't exact, don't worry. This is only just to give you some guidelines. Now that you see you have the two X's opposite of each other, I'm moving them to the sides. I'm going to put two X's in between there. And this will give me an idea of where I'm going to put those strips. So I'll add two more here. And once you add the strips, it gets much easier to figure out where you're going. So that's all that is, it's just a guideline. And now I'm just going to take my first one. Now the length of this doesn't really matter. I just used the length of the cereal box and I'm going to have to trim them down anyway, but it's better to put them all in and then figure out where you want to trim them than to try to trim them first and they're too short. So I'm just gluing that piece in and just the same as I put all the other pieces in, I cut all these little tabs. So it gives me a perfect way to go around my ring. And every time we add a layer of tape or anything, it just reinforces it more. So it'll start to stiffen up more and more as you go. Now I'm just taking a piece of tape and attaching it to the back of this piece that I've put on. And I will go in the opposite direction of this one. I find this just the easier way to go. And now if I didn't have that X lined up perfectly, I can see when I put it on where the right spot is. So that's why I say this is just a guideline. It's all just to give you a little bit of bearing. And now I'll adhere this to the back. Now the two in between, you'll see right away whether you have enough room or not. And you'll know whether you want to follow the X or move it a little bit further over. You'll get an idea when you put this down. You'll find real easy that you just gauge it with your eye. You can pretty get much get it close. And we're going to have so much embellishment on this that if it's not perfect, nobody would notice it. And if you don't like where it is, it's only taped on, so just move it. Masking tape is very forgiving. So now I'll continue to put the other three pieces in and be right back. Now to measure the height. If you hold them all together and push down on them, it'll have, it'll look almost like a crisscross where they come together. These are clearly too long because when I hold it sideways, it looks more like a chef's hat than a crown. So I'm going to take off about three inches here. And what I'm doing is I'm going to take the first piece and then I'll measure the other pieces using that piece as a template to make them all about the same size. So you don't have to formally measure everything here. You can just take your little piece that you've cut off and use that as a template. And I may have to cut this again. Don't be too aggressive and cut it too much to start with. It's harder to put it back than it is to take it away. Now when I go to put the pieces together and hold them down, it looks more like a mini chef's hat. <laughs> But if I squish it down, I'm getting a little bit closer. I still need about another inch off. Once again, we look like a mini chef's hat, but if I squish it down a little further, it's still not where I want it to be. It's still just a little too large. It needs about another inch taken off. So what I'll do is repeat the process of taking about an inch off and take it off each one. And that should be about the right height. Now when I go to squish them all down or put them together when they meet up, and they meet up pretty easy after you do this a few times. Whoops. There's one inside there. Now remember, we're going to wet this with a little bit of glue and paper. And so this will all bend a whole lot easier. But I found that when I only used one layer, it bent too easy. You're just looking for a gauge and I like the way this falls. So I like this sizing and the way I'm going to put this together is make sure that you have this so that the sides are horizontally in front of you so you can really see how they meet that they're even. And then I'm just going to take a piece of tape on top and attach these two together. And now technically you're going from side to side, so you want to turn it and have the other ones facing you horizontally so that you get those evenly on. I find it better to take a piece of tape and tape the two that are, you're working with first, so you get those two attached. 
And when I start to press down on it, I get this lovely shape. And let me turn it sideways so you can see what I mean. See there I'm getting that beautiful curve and that nice crown shape, which is what I really want. So I want to make sure I tape it on the bottom here, inside, and on the top here, so that it's nice and sturdy. It makes a huge difference that I used the two strips attached to each other than the one strip. So if you're going to do tiny ones, I think one strip would be enough. But if you're doing bigger ones, this one is probably 12 inches wide. I'm going over this, and then I'm just going to cut this in between these little lattice pieces here so that I can reinforce them under. And I'll reinforce this four or five times because I don't want this coming apart when we're adding some paper and glue to it because it would just be a huge mess. So make sure this is well reinforced. As you can see, this tape is starting to pull up. I don't have thinner tape, so what I'm going to do is cut this tape into a thinner roll. And by cutting this into a thinner piece, I'll be able to wrap it around and reinforce it more in between these little ledges. And I'm just going to cut up into that ledge and wrap it on the inside. And you'll find this really adds a lot of strength. And we'll go make a crisscross on this direction right here and reinforce there. So just keep reinforcing this. Make sure you've got plenty of strength going on there. If you don't have it the way you want, take a razor, cut the tape, and start over. Don't settle at this point because if you don't have the shape you want, it won't change. It will not get better. This is your final form and if you don't like it, when you turn it, when you push down on it here or you turn it sideways, if it's not going the way you want, change it. This is your only opportunity. Like, I'm not sure, yeah, when I look at this sideways, this side is too short and this side is where I want it. So I will cut over here and pull that out. And I want to show you that mistake so that you know how to fix it if you make it. Um, I keep watching the monitor so it makes it much harder for me to... Well, actually, if I pull this out a little, that might be exactly what I want. And let me show you when I turn it sideways. Yes. Now you can see that it's even. So it was just a matter of pulling that piece out. So I'll just reinforce it now and get everything exactly how I want it. Now here I have some packing paper. This is the kind of paper you get when you're, sometimes something is shipped to you and they pack the paper around it just to keep it from bouncing around. Well, I always save this paper because it's awesome for this type of a project. If you don't have any of this, newsprint, old grocery bags, tissue paper, anything will do. You can even use paper towels, but the only problem I don't like about paper towels is sometimes they leave a design. But if that's all you have, it will work. So I'm just tearing this up into some smaller strips so that they're manageable. And you could cut this, but I like the way it looks better torn. The torn edge is just nicer looking than a cut edge. And here I have some school glue, any white glue will do. And I like to mix half glue and half water. So then I have a bottle that's just got some water in it. And this takes a little bit longer to dry, but it makes the paper go on a lot easier. And it also wets the cardboard, so it makes it more pliable for it to bend for you. And now I'm just going to put it on my cardboard. I like to do one piece at a time, one section at a time. I just find that easier. And I'll put my paper on, and then I'll go to the inside and wet it. And so this will turn into almost like a paper mache looking piece. So you won't see any of the cardboard from the box that we used this to start with. And I'll just keep taking the paper and placing it on top and coating it with this water and glue mixture. You only need like one coat with this because we use so much more cardboard and this is why it was better for me to put double up the cardboard. If you don't double up the cardboard then you have to double up on this and I think the cardboard is faster than this is so 
It just depends on what you have to work with. So if you don't have a lot of cardboard, you can reinforce it quite a bit this way. Just give it three or four coats with the paper. This will soften up the cardboard and stiffen it up when it dries. You'll find that this will come into this lower shape a lot easier as this gets wetter. Just continue covering all of these little bars with paper and I'll be back and I'm going to do the crown base also so the whole piece will be covered with my paper coating. And this will really bring things together. Now here where your bars connect, make sure you put two pieces of paper in here just to give it a little bit more strength because that's a connector spot. Now I've applied the paper all over the crown and it's wet and soft and it's real easy to make it go down. And I want it to dry in this position. I can't turn it sideways because it's too sticky. I'm using a heat tool and I'll dry it with that. If you don't have a heat tool, you can just put something like a heavy glass, like a jar like this on it and let it sit until it dries and make sure you move your pieces out the way you want them. And that will basically hold it in that position until it sets. So whatever you have, you can even put some weights on it, however you want it. And once it's dried, it will stay in this position. Now my crown is all hard and dry. It's been about five or six hours and it's really set up nicely. So now is the, my favorite part is embellishing it. I want you to see this is a little bit lopsided on the top here, this sticks up a little bit. Don't worry about all that because when we put the embellishments on it, it's all going to even out and look perfect. But now it's time to add some of the embellishments and I'm going to use this Sculpey air dry clay. You can use any air dry clay. I don't recommend using the homemade clay because it shrinks 20% and it, your pieces may crack as they dry. I've had experience with this one and I know it doesn't crack. Now I only take out a small piece to work with and then I keep it in a Ziploc bag with a wet paper towel in it just so I can keep this clay moist. Because it is an air dry clay, it will dry up while you're working with it so you want to keep it in a bag while you're working. Here's my Ziploc bag with a wet paper towel in it and I'll just keep it in here and then I'll work out of it when I need more clay. I just go back and forth. And I'm going to use this mold. This mold I got from, I think it was AliExpress, but they're on AliExpress, Wish, eBay. There's all these silicone molds and they're very reasonably priced. They, If you look in the fondant section or fondant mold section of any of those sites, you will find there's thousands of molds that have all sorts of beautiful designs and embellishments and they work wonderful with this clay and the easiest way to work with them is here's just a credit card that I cut up. I like to just spread it into the mold. This clay is not like polymer clay. If you were to use polymer clay I don't know if this piece would dry up in the oven or whatever but this clay is so much cheaper and better for this type of a product that I don't see the point in wasting my polymer clay on this. Now I'm going to fill in all of these little curly cues too. And if you just take small amounts, because this clay has like a, almost a toothpaste-y kind of consistency to it. It's not easy to sculpt with because it's a little too sticky, but it's really easy to mold with. So I'm just going to continue spreading it. And this goes really quickly, so doing a lot of pieces, it looks like it would take forever, but it doesn't. These clip molds, I'm sure somebody's going to say, why don't you use that with polymer clay? They're too soft for polymer clay. But there's different products for different things. So now to unmold this, I like to take a piece of just old paper. I just usually go in our printing recycle bin and I like to press it down into the paper and the clay has a tendency to stick to the paper if you press it onto it and then you this mold is so soft you just lift it up sometimes you have to coax it out of the mold and curl it a little but it's actually really easy to work with this. And the beauty of this clay is you can paint it however you want when you're done with it. Now I usually do two or three before I start working, so I'll make a few more. Because they don't dry very quickly, you can do them and keep going.
I'll usually form three or four pieces at a time before I will start putting them on my crown. I just find it goes quicker when you're not going back and forth doing the molding. And it also, if it dries up, it's already molded, so it's, it's not going to dry up very much. So I'll just take a toothpick and reattach that. You can't even tell it was not attached. If you find that it's sticking to the mold, just push it onto the paper, and sometimes the paper will just grab that clay, and it'll stick just enough that it makes it real easy to come out. Now I still have my glue and water mixture, and now I'll take the first one that I put out, and I'm just taking a razor blade. If you don't have a razor blade, you can use a gift card and scoop under it with a gift card. I found the blade to work better. This is a clay blade. You can use even a hardware store blade. So what I'm going to do with this is flip it over and take some of my glue mixture and just paint it on the back because I know that will make this stick perfectly onto my crown. And I want to put this at the very top here because I have a finial or something in the center. I want this to come out of that and where I've got a little clay on the edge there. I'm just going to take a toothpick and blend it in. And these finials I want to put on the side. On the side here, I want this curly cue to go one way and then they go in both directions. So I want them to go opposite of each other. So we've got that one and here's the other direction. And this will go really quickly, you'll be surprised. There we go. And see, now I've got that beautiful look right there. And I want another finial coming out of that. So we'll take, whoops, I cut the paper on that one. We'll keep these pearl pieces for later. Yes, I did cut the paper on that one. No worries, it's just scrap paper anyway. So I want this piece to come out from in between these pieces like that. Well, I'm not exactly in the center there. Just move it over a little bit. And you can make these go in or out, however you want. And because it has the glue on it, it slides pretty nicely until it sets up like this one already set up. So with the third one, I think I'm going to put that one. You know what? Maybe we'll do the pearls in between here. And let's do a strand coming this way so that it goes up and down. See, now this is just this one design. You'll find there's thousands and thousands of these on the internet. They all run about between two and ten dollars depending on how intricate they are. If they're a big one and they have a lot of designs they're like ten dollars. The smaller ones like this are two and three dollars. They're, they're usually pretty reasonable. Look at how pretty that is and how that completely changes it up. So I'm going to continue and add that all the way around so we'll see this other I'll go at the top here. Let me show you the top. So you have about 15 seconds that you can move this from when you put it down before the paper behind it will start to grab. So like right now it's already grabbing. There we go. I want to make sure that these little tails match up to each other. 
I like the way that looks and that that's in the center. And so I'll just continue going all around this and I'll be right back and you can see how pretty this is. And this is not difficult. This isn't sculpturing. This isn't spending hours and hours, but nobody would know it. And if you were having a party, this would make great decorations. Now you don't have to decorate these with clay. You could make paper flowers. You could use rhinestones. Whatever you have, whatever excites you, whatever your theme is, use that. I'm just using clay because I have these beautiful molds and I thought they'd look really pretty with it. Now I'm just going to finish decorating the sides and I'll be right back. Now I've got the whole top decorated and the sides and I want to put a finial on the top here. I don't have a round Christmas ball or styrofoam ball or anything. I have an egg. I always buy the eggs after Easter. I don't know why, but I always end up using them in things. And I think the egg would work just perfectly. It's a styrofoam egg. You could even use those fill eggs if the, you get the small ones. I always buy them after Easter and somehow or another, I always end up using them in my crafts. So here I've got these leftover pieces that I've created and I want to use these in the center here to hold up my little egg. And these are, they don't really even have to match up. You know how after Easter there's all this funny stuff that's left over and these were like different shape eggs that were different colors and they're pretty colors. They would actually look nice in a dish or something. But because they're so light, I think they're great for this type of a thing. If you don't have this, a Christmas ball would work, a styrofoam ball would work. I'm only going to use these curly cues and the little pearls. So I'm going to take filigree and I want this to have the, the heavier part on the bottom. This is why I say this is terrible for sculpting because when I try to roll it into a ball, I, it's not like polymer clay. You get kind of a lumpy, funny ball where polymer clay would have given me a nice soft surface. This, this is kind of more like cookie dough, trying to shape it. But I want something for it to sit on so I'm going to put this big glob of clay in there so that when I put it on the crown over here, it'll have something. So I took a toothpick and just made a little design around this. My memory card just cut out on me. So I just made these little indents because this clay is not really easy to sculpt. And I'm just going to take these little filigrees and decorate my egg with it. I don't want it to look like I have an Easter egg on my crown. But I want you to know what I used. So if you happen to have any old eggs or any different things you can use, use them. You don't have to have everything I have. So I'm just taking that filigree and decorating it on both sides so that it doesn't look like an egg. We all know it's an egg, but we want to make it look like it's meant to be there and it fits in with the piece. Now, try and get it on the other side equally. Okay, and if you look at it from the top, it helps you get it a little bit more centered. Just add some pearls coming down the center here. I don't think the whole thing will fit, but oh, this one was I cut short, so that one will fit. If I cut that one short, it should fit. And that helps change that whole shape that it doesn't look as much like an Easter egg anymore. And now I'm just going to add some glue to the bottom. 
and we're going to glue the bottom of the crown too. I probably should have put the pearls on last, but hopefully, yeah, I can squeeze it on the side. So I just want to push it into the clay here so it sits up nicely. And at your angle, you're looking down at it, but if I turn it sideways, you can see it sits quite nicely and it doesn't look like an egg anymore. It looks like a finial, which is what I wanted it to look like. And that's why I buy a lot of kind of strange egg things because they do look like finials when you decorate them. Now, I do feel I need something in between here. So I'm thinking the only thing I have left on this is these little pearls. So I think I'll push out some more pearls and put them in the center. And then I've got to give this 24 hours to dry before we can do anything to it. Otherwise, the paint will peel off because there's still water in the clay. Now the final thing that I do to this before I let it totally dry for 24 hours is I just take my glue and water mixture and make sure I get down all those little edges on all my pieces. So I just go around them and because there's so much water in this it won't be globby like it looks now. It'll dry nice and flat but it will take those little spots where you have any gaps and fill them in quite nicely. So I'll do this, let this dry 24 hours, and then I'll come back and we can paint it. Now my crown is all dry and finished, and I have it in a box. Let me pull back so you can see. I've just cut a regular shipping box open so that I have a little spray area so it's easier to work in, and I'm using Rust-Oleum Metallic. I find this one to be the best. I can get it at Home Depot. This is the Metallic Gold. So I'm just going to show you a brief part of me spraying this. You can kind of get the gist. So here you can see my larger crown that's unfinished and I finished this in the same way but I did the smaller one because it was easier to photograph what I was doing and I just want you to see this before I spray painted. I spray painted the other one and but I wanted to give you the before because I actually think this is really pretty the way it is but my daughters will go all over me that I didn't paint it gold. It's too shabby chic looking for them. So I'm going to spray this and come back. Now here I have my crown spray painted gold and they're quite pretty. You don't really need to do anything else to them. If you want to line them with a the fabric, that's real easy. Just cut a circle, glue it to the inside, glue it to the inside top here, and then glue it around. Just cut some tabs and cut, glue it around the sides. I like these just as a frame. I think they're really neat looking, but I showed these to my daughter and she said to me, Mom, they're too plain. You need to rhinestone them out. So I wanted to show you the before and the after. I didn't want to just rhinestone them and miss this step. And I'll show you both of these when they're finished. This one I had put the little bees on just a circle that I cut out three circles and stacked them up just to be different. I had this just a single bee mold and the rest are all the same mold that I've used. So I want to show you before and I'll come back once I've rhinestone them out. I've got lots of glass rhinestones. I'm using some E6000. You can also use plastic rhinestones, but I was given direct orders that I have literally a five pound bag of rhinestones that my daughter left here. She told me use the glass ones. So, okay, I'll use the glass ones because they are a lot sparklier but it really depends on your budget and what you're using these for. I don't think that the regular ones would make much of a difference. Now here I have one that's I've already rhinestoned. Let me move this out of the way so you can see it better. You can see how the rhinestones really add a lot of sparkle. I made this one for my little doll that I use in my stop motion. I just thought it was kind of fun. And I may line this with some pink velvet or I may just leave it plain. I haven't decided. I really like the way the skeleton just like this looks. And it looks so elegant and it's hard to believe that this was just strips from a cereal box. So I'll rhinestone these two up because watching me rhinestone these is going to take probably three hours. And you don't want to watch me for three hours rhinestoning things up. It's simply adding a glob of glue and then rhinestoning that entire area. That's all there is to it, or leaving whatever you want plain, making a design with the rhinestones, a stripe with the rhinestones. But either way, it's very time consuming. So 
I just want to show you the end result because that's really what will make you decide whether you want these with rhinestones on them or you want them plain. So I wanted to show you what they looked like on the statue. These are, I have two angel statues so they have different crowns. I wanted them to be different. So when I have a party I love to decorate my little statues outside my house something fun and different. Here's the other statue. These statues weigh about a hundred pounds so they're not easy for me to move where they're at. I have two columns on the sides of my entrance so they're each there. But I just like the little sparkles and how fun this is and just has a different kind of a silly look. COVID will be over hopefully soon enough. We all have to think positive and hopefully I'll be able to have some company with my little statues decorated. Now here's my outside porch so you may see here some cars going around but I just set up my dining room table out here just to show you how I would use these as a tablescape type of a thing. And I've used just a little crystal jar as a stand to bring some height to my table and the other one was just a little angel stand. Here I've just used a cake plate and some old pearls that I pick up bags of those from the thrift stores. They're not great quality, but they're fun for decorating, just like on my angels. You can see I've just added them all around. And this is an old scarf that's mine. It's not a table scarf or anything special, just a plain beige scarf that I use. just another crystal jar. Any little collectibles that kind of match your theme always look perfect in a tablescape. And here you can see the little crown. I'll show you the angels underneath it. It's a really cool statue. I picked that up at a flea market. I'm always looking for oddities. So there's lots of neat ways you can use these. I like to use these. My family hasn't been together for a year since COVID, so I thought this would be a fun birthday celebration when we all can finally get together. So I hope I gave you lots of neat ideas and inspiration and thanks for watching. I just found this on Facebook and it is such an opportunity for our crafting community. I've applied. I think any of you should apply. You never know. You may be more qualified than you think. Give it a shot. You never know what's going to happen with this. I don't really understand who's running this or what the program is, but anything that supports our crafting community, we should support. So go to craftercasting at castingcrane.com and apply. You never know. You may be way more talented than you think.